Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to go over how to make this box with a cool CSS only hover state. Ok, so as always we're going to start off in Sublime with an almost blank canvas, so I've linked the style sheet, open here with our usual default parameters, no margin, padding, no list style or text decoration. And also I've linked the font hosted by Google called Open Sand. it's a really nice font but it is optional. So first off we're going to create a div and give it a class. And the class is going to be called box item. In this case, it's going to be called box item. You can call it whatever you want. Just remember this later when you're styling it with CSS. Go down a couple of lines, close this off. Inside, give it some text. What text do you want it to display before the hover state? So for me, I'm going to say hover over me. Look at it now. Not in there. You know, so we know it's working, but there's not in there yet. And now in our CSS, we're going to give it some parameters. So I'm going to say on the body, this is stylistic again. You don't have to do this. If it's for your own personal project, you probably won't do this. But I'm going to say display flex, justify content center, which will then center the content. I'm going to give it a margin of 75 pixels on the top and bottom and zero on the left and right. You won't see anything yet, so let's not even refresh. Go down, go to our box item. Remember, you can call it whatever you want. Just remember it now. These two options are the height and width. So these are required, but you can have them whatever you want. But the height and width needs to be clearly defined. So my width in the in the example I showed you earlier was 400 pixels and the height was also 400 pixels. Thus given us a square. So if I give this a background color of red and then just refresh so you can see, this is what we have so far. Not too impressive. And now the things that make it work. So we're going to give it a display of flex. And this, the display flex property is just used in my case to center things vertically and horizontally. Now align items center and then also justify content center as well. So align items will center this in the middle of the page. So vertically, this will be centered using the align items and horizontally, it'll be centered using justify content. So if you look at this now, it's di directly in the middle of the page, directly in the middle of our container, exactly what we want. But we are finished yet. So there's a few more things now that are just optional stylistic sort of things. So I'm going to set a font family of o to open sans, which is the font I linked earlier in my HTML. And I'm going to give it a size of 30 pixels, a weight of 800 to make it really bold. Background position. This is my case. I'm having a background image, as you saw in the example earlier. Background position, center. Background, repeat, no repeat. Background image. Now this is it where we're gonna link our background image. So dot dot to go back a directory. Images is my directory. And then cat.jpg is my image. So if we look at this now, this is perfect. Maybe set the background size to cover. Just in case. So now even if we resize our box, it'll always cover the entire width and height of our container. Color of the text, white, and padding, 20 pixels. And this is just so that the text never gets too close to the outside of the container, no matter how high or wide we make our container. So that's it now for our box item. Now will look exactly like this, but you see here it doesn't really hover, it doesn't do anything at all yet. And that's because we missed a key element out in our HTML. So we're gonna use one of the lesser known properties in HTML and it's data types. This is incredibly useful, but not a lot of people know about it. So I'm gonna say data hover equals, and then I'm gonna just do some lorem ipsum. Just type LO in sublime text, press enter, and you'll get a whole load of lorem ipsum, um, which is just randomly generated kind of text. Um, and now go back to our CSS, and give our box item the hover state. We want the font size to go to zero. So if we look at this now, hover, goes away, hover, goes away, hover, goes away. So this is working so far. The thing that we're gonna be using to make our hover state work is the after property, which is a pseudo element of CSS. So we're gonna be controlling that now and that's our last piece of CSS. So say box, item, or whatever you called it, hover, after. So it's saying when we hover over it, change the after property. So what do we wanna change? We wanna change the content because that's where our hover text is stored. And then also another lesser known CSS property is the attribute property. And you see it turns blue, so we know it's a function in CSS. And then we just call it whatever we called our data type. So data hover is what we called it here. So type data hover, exactly as it's seen in the CSS. Font size, I'm gonna make my font size smaller because there's a lot of text in this part as you saw earlier in the HTML. And then line height, 28 pixels. You should never go below 24 pixels in line height, I've learned recently in work. Um, so now I'm going to make the weight also 200 pixels. And if we look at this now, 
So you hover over it and see it, it, it works, but again, stylistically, we want it to be aligned center, the text aligned to center. Now we look at this now, see this? Also, we could do a get rid of that red that comes up when we, if we look at it now, it's absolutely perfect. Exactly what you saw in the example. And normally you'd have to use jQuery and JavaScript to achieve this effect, but here you have it now just using CSS and HTML, you know, barely 50 lines of CSS as well. So thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope it's been really helpful in showing you how to do this without jQuery. Please subscribe, leave a comment. So thanks a lot for watching this video and I hope to see you back here on this channel again for the next one.